In this video for Open Buildings Designer Connect Edition, HVAC Design, we'll take a look at creating a new work set and a new model file. So I'll start Open Buildings Designer with my desktop shortcut here. Now I've been in Open Buildings Designer, so I'm opening up to what's called the work page. On the work page, you'll see recent work sets over here on the left. We can set our workspace and we can choose our work set that are in that workspace. Notice we've got some information over here on the right hand side. For this course, I'll be using the building examples. Delivered workspace comes with the software. Throughout this series of videos for HVAC design, I'll be working in this work set that I'll create here. So I'll go create work set. I'll call this mechanical training. I always like to put a description. I'll put a description in here. Professional series training. And the key here is to choose a template. Notice that right now this is set to none. I open up this list and I can choose any of those work sets that I've got in this workspace as my template to create the new work set. I'll choose the multi-use retail building US and I'll say OK. I'll get this alert box that it's cloning the work set. So basically it's copying the files, setting up the configuration uh, for that work set. And I'll create a new file. So I've got my new work set ready to go. I'll choose the new file button here. Whenever you create a new file, it uses a seed file. If I hit browse right here, I can see in my work set, I've got this design seed, drawing seed, and I see I've got design seed, drawing seed, and sheet seed. So if I choose design seed, I'll say open there. So that's setting the seed file. And then I'll give this file a name. I'm calling it M Grocery HVAC. Now there's already a file in this work set with that name that has the finished example of what we're going to do throughout these series of videos. So I'm going to put training on the name of this file and I'll just say open. And then I will open the new empty file. I've got this information dialog box, Open Buildings Designer Connect Edition is not backwards compatible. Editing elements will make them incompatible with previous versions of Open Buildings Designer. Just an alert to let us know, as we get new versions of the software, some of the data set changes out there, uh, will make it incompatible with earlier versions of the software. You can always say, don't show this warning again. I'll say, okay, right here. So I've created my new work set. I've created my new file that I'll start modeling in. But before I start modeling, I'm going to reference in the architectural discipline master file and the structural discipline master file. So here I am in my empty file. I've got pretty much the default interface. Uh, haven't really opened any other toolboxes or moved things around very much except for this attributes toolbox. You'll notice I've got it docked right here. You can get to that through this drop-down menu here where you see we have Explorer, Family Part, Attributes, etc. One other thing I've got open is the Explorer. I've got it unpinned on the left over here. So I'll come to my mechanical tab and these are split buttons we see in the interface here. If I just choose that drop-down arrow, I notice I can get to attach reference right here. So I'll just get right to the Attach Reference dialog box, open the Designs folder. I'll select my A Discipline Master file. If I hold the Control key down, I'll select the S Discipline Master file. So just like in Windows Explorer, I can use Shift or Control to select multiple files to attach as references. Notice over here in the Attachment method, I've got it set to Interactive. When we set it to interactive, I'll say open here. It opens this reference attachment properties. I'm going to adjust a couple of the settings here. I see there's my uh, model I'm attaching. It actually has a logical name. 
already filled out for me, very good, and a description. But I want to change the live nesting to, let's say, a depth of five for this work set. Works good. And I want to make sure and turn on this ignore attachment when live nesting. This little toggle right here means that when I attach the file I'm in, M Grocery HVAC Training, to another file as a reference attachment, and I've got live nesting turned on and whatever depth I've got set there, then it leaves this out of that live nesting. So it ignores the attachment when live nesting the file that you're in to another file. So I'll say OK right there. Then we'll see that the structural one opens up. Remember, I selected two files. Again, I see, oh, it's got a logical name filled out for me already. Whatever I set for the architectural one, you see it's all set here. My ignore attachment when live nesting is turned on, I'll say OK right there. So I can see I've got those files attached here. I'll double click on my wheel of my mouse just in each of the views that does a fit on the views. And a couple other things. I'm going to be working on that ground floor to uh, create this HVAC model. So I'll come to my floor selector, which is docked along the bottom down here. If I pull it out, there it is, floor selector. And I'll choose the ground floor. So when I do that, I see the column grids show up for that ground floor. Another thing I want to do in the floor selector is take advantage of the isolate option we have down here. And that's this button right here. As I hover over it, you see isolate active floor. Anytime you see this icon with these four diamonds on it, you can see some of them are dashed in there. That means isolate. Uh, there's various things you can do to isolate things in your models. I'm going to open this arrow here. Now that's going off of my recording. So I'm going to move my interface up or just move my application up a little bit. Let me grab it by the corner over here. So we can see that just the way I'm recording uh, here. So again, you'll see that little arrow there. You can set the active floor offset and the next floor offset. So what that means is I want to isolate the ground floor, but I want it to go 15 feet below where that ground floor is set. Now my ground floor is at zero, zero. So this will, uh, give me 15 feet down. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to place this air handling unit down below the ground floor. In, in this case, it's kind of a, in a sub area of the uh, building here. And then the next floor offset means take a look at that floor by floor setting in the floor selector, but go six feet above that. So I'm getting a slice of the model to Isolated. I don't really want, while I'm working on it, don't want to see all those floors above me, let's say, for example. So if I just simply choose the isolate floor, then you'll see what that does. So that affects all of my views out here. And again, I'll do a double click on my views with my wheel and uh, do that fit. Now, a couple other things I'd like to do. Let me get my uh, application kind of back to my full recording dimensions here. Some of these architectural spaces have a volume in there. Now, I like using these shaded display styles, but sometimes that can be an issue if I'm trying to click points into that volume. Well, that volume kind of gets in my way. So for my view one and view three, I'm going to turn those A area levels off for those views. Now that will turn off the, the space labels. So what I like to do in this case is, is leave those space labels in my wireframe mode over here in the top view. So let's look at the display style that I've got for this top view. I'll click on the header of view two to make it my active view. And then I'll right press to access the context sensitive menu, I can open the view attributes dialog from this menu. And once that opens, you see here's the view attributes for view two. I see that this display style is set to wireframe white background. If I click on view one, oh, this one is in this example display style. That's one that's provided in these work sets. 
And if I look at view three, I can see that's also using that one. But again, you notice as I come over here and with my element selection tool, how it's finding that volume that's part of that architectural space from my architectural reference. So I'm gonna come up to levels. And again, I can just use this split button, the arrow there, and go level display and choose my architectural file in the level display dialog box. I always like to sort it by this used column. You know, if I, if I choose name, it's gonna sort it by name and you can see, well, some of these are used, a lot of these aren't used. So I can just click used right there. And since I did name first and used second, I've got them in alphabetical order here and all the ones that are used on the top of my list here. So I'm gonna choose A area. I'm adjusting this for view one. And I'm gonna just gonna click in view three down here and do the same thing. So I can see as soon as I click in view three, it shows that A area is turned off. So I'm good to go with my levels there. So the last thing I'll do here is come up to the quick access ribbon and apply a save settings to my design file here. And that way, the next time I open it up, the views will be arranged that the way I have them arranged, they'll be zoomed in the way I have them set, the display styles will be set, and those levels will be turned off that I turned off. I created my work set. I've got a new file created. I referenced in my other disciplines, the architectural, the structural. I did a little manipulating with the isolate floor and turned off a, a level. And now I'm ready to start modeling. So the next video will be placing supply diffusers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.